subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates jungle raj ke yuvraj fish collection ke unhone apna pariyan mali ji ne samajik ko kiya you must be watching bihar assembly elections with a lot of curiosity is nitish kumar going to win or is tejashwi yadav going to unseat him i do not have any clear cut answer to your questions what i have gathered from the field i have been traveling in the state i am going to share my experiences with you in this episode of politically correct now there are several narratives in this bihar election i am not going to get into all of them today because uh, we'll have a discussion on this on thursday in uh, the next episode of polyglaph when i'll be joined by my colleagues who have also traveled in the state and we'll field your questions too today what i'm going to do is to uh, discuss two uh, two of all the uh, two of so many narratives which actually struck me uh, they are unmistakable if you are traveling in uh, bihar they are unmistakable one is modi nain modi's growing popularity it's amazing he has been six years in power at the center and his popularity seems to be only growing now i have covered several elections in bihar but in this election i am not seeing a kind of shift in the sense uh, earlier you know you would have uh, people who would be criticizing him also you will have large you will have a large number of people who will be supporting him also this time all, what i am not no, witnessing is a uh, you go to any region in bihar you go to mathlanchal you go to avadh or you come across any caste or any class you hear the same thing modi as when well modi is there everything is fine you do not hear a single word against him so the entire debate is about tejasvi and nitish and when you talk about nitish or when you talk about the bjp or the jdu invariably everything boils down to modi and once we start talking about modi well there is nothing else to ask you get total endorsement which is very surprising but that is not to suggest that the nda is going to have a smooth sail in this bihar election because it's this election is not for the prime minister this election is for the chief minister and as uh, some people gathered outside uh, the state bjp headquarters in, headquarters in patna or telling me that when you are uh, going for the election of a mukhya or village headman it doesn't matter whether the chief minister is coming to campaign for him or not because you will be voting for the mukhya or headman not for the chief minister basically that's in the context of what the pm is doing this pm has been campaigning he is going to he has scheduled to uh, actually uh, address more than a dozen rallies by the time the election is over but unlike in uh, previous elections at least uh, since i would say since uh, november 2018 when rajasthan Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh uh, went to polls. The pattern we have seen is somehow uh, the Prime Minister uh, not a topic of discussion because the entire campaign revolves around uh, local issues, and then uh, some of the analysts have come to the conclusion that Prime Minister is not able or no longer able to influence assembly election results just because the concerns of the people in a particular state are different. in assembly elections from what they have when they vote for vote to choose the prime minister but what we are seeing in this assembly election is is modi is all over the prime minister is all over national issues are getting traction even though you have a very strong resonance of uh, tejashwi yadav still lack like, uh, job promise even though you hear a lot of voices asking for badlav a change again i am not suggesting that all of them want nitish kumar to go actually when you look at his loyal vote bank that are for uh, the extremely backward classes and the mahadalits you see see them still endorsing nitish nitish kumar's governance even though a section of them might have some grouse against him that's and the matter I'm talking about ebc and uh, mahadalits just to elaborate on this ebc is was not created by nitish kumar it was kapuri thakur who created it nitish kumar just added a few more castes similarly mahadalits when he created mahadalits i think it was in 2009 uh, correct me if i'm wrong uh, when he got 18 sub castes of the scheduled castes to uh, i actually club them together and form this mahadalit gave them more incentives 
and uh, got some welfare schemes for them. But later on, he went through, went on to add uh, other other sub castes also, including Pasans. So today, you do not have any uh, difference between Dalits and Mahadalits. But yes, EBCs, EBCs constitute about 25% of the Bihar population. And you add uh, the SC population, 16%. So we are talking about 41% population still, I won't say swelling by this, but still kind of endorsing him. So even if you see some of them curiously watching Tejasri Yadav and hearing, hearing his uh, appeal for a change of God in Bihar and hearing him uh, talk about they like jobs, there is a lot of curiosity about him. But when it comes to endorsement, because Tejasri has done, he just promises to uh, actually give. He did not have any track record. He, he was a, a deputy chief minister for a short time, and people don't really seem to know about his contributions then. So he is still uh, somebody who is untested, and people are curious. But when it comes to Nitish Kumar, yes, you hear a lot of things. You hear how uh, so many schemes that he has launched managed to touch some aspect of the of the other of everybody's life at some stage, from prenatal to postnatal. And people have got money uh, for floods, uh, they have been getting free food, food, food grains. Of course, that was a central scheme. You hear a lot of schemes that Nitish Kumar has rolled out. So, specifically, there is no grouse against him. You also hear about this traditional Bijli Pani Sarak thing. Alex power supply has improved tremendously. People are getting 18 hours to 22 hours of power supply. Roads are far, far better. Uh, you talk about water, now this pipe water uh, supply to households, that's going to change people's life dramatically, you know, you don't have to travel for kilometers with a picture on your head, and especially uh, for women, and they had to do all that in the past. Now things are changing uh, drastically on the ground. So you do not, when it comes to basic amenities of life, you do not really have, have main grievances. But why this? yearning for change or why this loud talk about change because every other person you meet may tell you well you know if they change we don't mind so he or me may end up voting for Nitish Kumar again but point is this all these talks talk about change somewhere brand Nitish Kumar has taken a hit and I was trying to find out why because I was talking to all kinds of voters Trying to see the exact reason. You heard about unemployment. Yes, there is massive unemployment in Bihar, of course. That's the truth. And that's why the sweet job promise is getting a lot of residents. Though at the end of it, we don't know. When we are talking about the possibility of people voting for employment or, un or unemployment in Bihar, we are actually saying that Bihar is trying to move beyond caste politics. I would, I would be very careful before saying that. Anyways, having said that, one is unemployment that is uh, that issue uh, gaining traction. And second is this corruption at the ground levels. As they say that the machinery of Bihar government is such that unless you lubricate it with the corruption, it does not move. So everywhere you go, you have to reach some pounds. That's a common narrative whenever you go, when you, who, who you talk to. So somewhere that brand has taken a hit. But apart from this unemployment and corruption, uh, people in general are not really able to put their finger to, okay, this is why he must change. That specific answers are not available. Those answers I got from people who have worked with Nitish Kumar for long, especially senior IS officers, who have worked with the Lalu Yadav regime, Ramli Yadav regime, and uh, who have worked with Nitish Kumar. They give very interesting insights. What they say is, you know, why Nitish Kumar, or the brand Nitish Kumar is taking a hit? Because he's suffering from what they call a 1974 batch syndrome. What is this syndrome? By 1974 batch, what they mean is, you know, the crop of leaders from Bihar who actually rose into prominence in Jaipakas Narayan's uh, students' movement in 1974. So you have Lalu Yadav, Sushil Modi, Ravi Shankar Prasad, uh, Nitish Kumar, Ram Vilas Paswan, all these leaders were part of that movement. And all of them have made it big in their political career later. But when bureaucrats are talking about syndrome, what they are trying to say is, you know, when they are part of the JP's movement, they know how to lead a movement. The leaders have learned that much. And before that, they also knew 
uh, understood the social justice philosophy of Ramun Hollohiya. But they have somehow not moved beyond that. So even today when you hear uh, Ditish Kumar, well, once this Bijli Pani Sarak thing is taken care of, Ditish Kumar does not seem to be having any new idea which would actually address the concerns of the aspirational class, the youth. You don't really hear anything. So you have, what he talk, talks about is, okay, I have opened this medical college, I have opened this engineering college. Now, in every subdivision, is, uh, subdivision in Bihar, there has to be an uh, there has to be an ITI institute, institute, there are so many polytechnic colleges, but go deeper. Yes, they, there are colleges, but look at the quality of uh, the faculty. Now, if you have a medical college in Saharsa opening, you don't really expect eminent doctors to go there and teach and practice. Because no, there is no infrastructure available. It's not just about the hospital, it's about what you get out there. What, what, where do, you, uh, do your children study? I mean, do you feel safe being in Saharsa as a prominent doctor? So what we are given to understand that, you know, you have medical college, the faculty is not up to that level. You have engineering college, again, again, faculty is not there. You have political college, there is no faculty. You have IT institute, there is no faculty at all. So, what is happening? In, in schools, of course, Nitish Kumar has developed a lot of physical infrastructure. But then the quality of teachers that his government hired is so bad that you know there are stories galore about what teachers themselves don't seem to be know, knowing nothing. And it's a big disaster for them. Not just this generation, for the next generation also, when you have teachers who have just got their degrees from somewhere and are supposedly teaching now. You have engineers, now, assistant engineers were recruited without any competition. Now, senior government officers tell you that most of the engineers have no idea what they are paid for because they just got some degree from some private institute and they have got the government jobs now. So when Nitish Kumar talks about aspirational politics, he does not really get into that. What one bureaucrat told me, like he has a tunnel vision. So, okay, fine, I'm okay for if industries come, but he will not really push it. So in 2011, the government came, came with an industrial policy. In 2016, the government uh, came with another one. But they were so half-hearted. You do not have any big industries in Bihar even today. The last time a new industrial area was created in Bihar was in 1990. Now you have one coming up in Beta, but it has been on for the last one decade. You do not have not really seen any industries coming up. But in the last 30 years, you have just about 50 industrial areas with a total land bank of just about 5,000 acres, which is nothing. Now, if you expect big industries to come, you cannot have one industrial area of 250, 300 acres. It shows this lack of vision. One big industry will need at least 300 acres each. And you are talking about a, a whole industrial area whose average size is 200 to 25 acres. Then you have all these issues about, uh, you know, Permissions, this red tapism. So earlier, of course, there was a problem. There was a law and order issue, there was power supply issue, there was this issue of roads. Nitish Kumar has, of course, taken care of all that. But now he needs to move on. And this is where the bureaucracy uh, tells us that the 1974 syndrome catches up. Oh, there shouldn't be any. I mean, industrialization is fine, but I should not be seen as being pro-industry. I shouldn't be seen as giving capital subsidies to them. I shouldn't be seen as giving any uh, tax-free or any, any tax-free incentives or any other institution in way. Because otherwise, I will be known as a pro-rich person or anti-farmer person, anti-farmer leader. That these leaders don't want to be seen as. So, you do not have any industrialization and you do not have any urbanization. Without these two, you do not, I mean, you can't even expect this chorus for uh, uh, employment to die down because it will only go up. There are no government jobs available. You have to have the private sector in place. For that private sector in place, for that investment to come, the chief minister has to have a larger vision. He has to be thinking about it. But somehow you have not really seen Nitish Kumar as earlier uh, Lalu Yadav. These leaders have not really shown that adaptability, that with time, their politics also have to change. And this is, this is what is not happening in Bihar. But yeah, there is a, a silver lining there. 
I was reading a uh, journalist Arun Sinha's uh, book that was about uh, the battle for Bihar. Nitish Kumar, the theater of power. Now he has given an anecdote there. Now this writer Arun Sinha, he was Nitish Kumar's classmate when the two of them were doing engineering in the uh, 1960s. After that they were part of the student movement also. They are friends. So he gives us an anecdote you know, in November 2010 when these people went, went to meet Nitish Kumar after his thumping victory in 2010 assembly elections this was first thing was well i want to learn english because i have been learning it through official files and that language has, that has really corrupted my language i want to learn english so anun Singh and others got him a thesaurus got him a dictionary i don't know how Nidish kumar used those books but the what i'm driving at is that Nidish kumar is somebody who still wants to learn we are yet to see whether he is going to unlearn what he learned as, a, as an agitationist, I would, I would say, as a, as a politician who was seeking some space in the opposition politics in the 1970s. Can he unlearn all that and become somebody who is looking forward and who is looking to change his own politics to reflect the aspirations of the youth? Is he ready to learn? We don't know, but if he is ready to learn, Somewhere he has to convey this message to the youth today because they seem to be very restless in Bihar today. And the sooner the Shumar does, he has just about what are you on the third, you're on the second phase of election, on the seventh, the third, you're on the third and last phase. We don't know whether the Shumar will be able to convey this to the youth that he is ready to change. But come what may, uh, what, what will on, uh, on the 10th of November when the results are out, if the Shumar is voted back, it's high time that he should look at this 1974 syndrome again. I mean, he should think about it seriously and change his politics.